This is the interior of a normal Juno 106, straight from 1985. There's its voice board with all of its voice chips. And of course, this is the CPU that drives the voice board. And then over here, we have the CPU board. So the CPU board, of course, has a big CPU on board right over here. And it's basically the big brother of the microcontroller that's running the voice board. But this, of course, handles the entire synth. Now, this is the extent of the Juno 106, the brains and the brawn. And how do we upgrade that? How do we make it modern? Easy. Kiwi 106 upgrade. Now, the Kiwi 106 upgrade is basically outfitted as an easy to install kit. Let me show you how. I'll just open the box. And uh, what's inside is, of course, not what you will see exactly, because this is a pre-production unit. Um, but... First and foremost item to consider is the Kiwi 106 CPU upgrade board itself. So this replaces the CPU board inside your Juno 106. So, having replaced that is one thing, step number one. It's, of course, uh, the actual production units aren't going to have a daughter card. They'll actually have the main CPU soldered directly to the board. But this will give you many times the patch memory, not requiring a battery. It will give you all kinds of additional functions, like an additional LFO uh, and also an additional envelope. It will give you the ability to do all kinds of modulation routing. It will give you the ability to have velocity sensitivity through MIDI. Um, so that means anything coming in from MIDI will actually be equipped with velocity information. So consequently, it'll be able to play. Now that's going to give you a completely different sound for your Juno 106 uh, in terms of its dynamics and playability. But there's more to it than just simply updating this CPU board. The uh, voice assigner chip is sadly primitive compared to what we can do today. So in fact, what's going to happen is this is going to come out and be replaced by what's in this bag, and I'm not going to unbag it. Uh, it is basically an interface card. This is the CPU interface card, and it lives in that spot. So this is where you're going to need a tech, or at least you're going to have to be good at using a vacuum desoldering tool to remove these pins. And once you have this installed and this installed, as you can imagine what they might look like. You then connect them with the supplied ribbon connector, like so, well, roughly speaking. And then once that's in place, you now have a working CPU, you have a basically a connection into the voice board, and the voice board is being run by the CPU on its spare time, which it can easily do because it's a modern CPU. And uh, that would be the extent of the Kiwi 106 upgrade kit. Of course, there is the cosmetically beautiful metal Kiwi 106 and Kiwi Technics nameplates, which you can put anywhere you like. Um, I personally think that they look really good. The Kiwi 106 looks really good just over here, like an old Prophet synthesizer. And that way you're not actually putting it up on the front panel. But if your front panel actually has scars on it or dents or whatever, you might actually choose to cover them up with a Kiwi 106 label. Anyway, that notwithstanding, we look at this situation and say, great, so that is the Kiwi 106 kit. However, you might be thinking, well, if I go and remove this processor and solder in this interface, I'm never going to be able to run this as a Juno 106 ever again. Uh, well, you could, but it would be awfully a lot of work to desolder that interface board and then get the chip, if you've remembered where you've kept it, and then put the legs back in the holes and solder it back in. And then, of course, you'd be back in the situation where it's an equal amount of work to go back to being a Kiwi 106, which is why the Kiwi 106 has an option called the Swap Backboard. And this is a $20 option, and it's not included with the kit, but you can get it as part of the bundle. And basically, what the Swap Backboard is, it's a plug-in carrier for this CPU. So this CPU, would, you'd come, it would come out, and you'd solder it in to the Swap Backboard, and then you would use the supplied, that come along with the Swap Backboard, these uh, socket pins. And so now understand, you would want to get the swap back board at the same time as the Kiwi Technics upgrade. And what you would do is you would desolder this, clean those holes, 
mount these sockets. Then, having mounted these sockets, you would take the liberated chip and mount it into the swap backboard carrier, thereby having essentially a socketable old school CPU. And then here is the socketable interface to the new Kiwi 106. So you install that, you install this, you take your old CPU, and you take the swap backboard with your old microcontroller for the voice board, and you put them on a shelf in the Kiwi Technics upgrade box, or some other box you're not going to lose track of. And uh, you now have the ability to have a Kiwi 106 that can be, with a little bit of work, but no soldering required, transformed back into a standard Juno 106. And then with, again, a little bit of work, but no soldering required, transformed back into a full Kiwi 106. And so that's the whole thing in a nutshell. Check out Kiwi106.com for the uh, details and also the Kiwi Technics website at KiwiTechnics.com. So that's pretty straightforward there. Anyway, um, this is Integrator signing off and uh, we're going to do the rest of this list where we'll actually do all this work.